Hey, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and I'm doing this special chalk talk to all my subscribers on YouTube. I wanted to thank you all very much for watching my videos. I have almost 100,000 views at this point in just eight months. So it seems there are a lot of you out there who enjoy my videos. I haven't posted a new one in quite a while, and the reason is I'm working on the ECG Academy itself. The website is really coming along, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but I wanted to point out something new. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a box here where you can actually take a free assessment test. It's kind of like a pretest. You can check your knowledge and see how you do on a 20 question quiz that I'm providing for free just to see if you're at the level that you should be at. If you do well on this quiz, then you've been watching my videos and you're on your way to become an ECG expert like me. Once you click on this, a new page will open that shows the ECG Academy pretest. When you click on that, you'll only need to register and then you can go ahead and you'll have 30 minutes to complete the test. You'll get the grade as soon as you're done. So that'll give you some instant feedback. For those of you who want to take the test, good luck. Now let's get to our chalk talk. I label this a wide QRS tachycardia because there are two characteristics of this. First of all, it, the QRS is wide and the heart rate is fast. As you scan the forest across, you'll notice that the QRS complexes are clearly irregular. You've got longer intervals here and you've got much shorter intervals here. And if you try to extract a pattern out of it, you might not be able to appreciate any kind of pattern. The longest R to R looks like it's over here someplace. Now, how are you going to figure out what the rate is? Because someone's going to need to know the rate. If you're lucky enough to see three second marks on the cardiogram, you can use my trick of reading the number of R to R intervals in six seconds and then multiplying by 10. That usually gives you a pretty close estimate of what the heart rate is. If you don't have three second marks, you can just start counting. The easiest way is to just find a QRS complex that lands on a heavy line and then count off six seconds. Remember that each large box is 200 milliseconds, so it's five boxes per second. I counted off six seconds here. And now we count the number of R to R intervals in those six seconds, okay? So, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 and a half, that gives us a rate of 135 beats per minute. All right, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? And it's much more accurate than just trying to guesstimate which one might be the average rate. Well, the fact that the QRS is rapid and it's irregular and there's no pattern, you do have to sort of look carefully at the baseline to make sure that you're not missing flutter waves because atrial flutter can become somewhat irregular, especially just below that two to one conduction. And even sometimes a slower atrial tachycardia can be conducting with winky back. But I can't say that I see flutter waves in any of the large spaces with the large R to R intervals, you know, you'd expect to see some kind of organized event going on in the atrium, but I don't see that. So it's safe to say that the rhythm here is best characterized as atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response. Remember, you should always kind of characterize the ventricular response to atrial fibrillation as either rapid, moderate, or slow. Depending upon the heart rate, if it's above 100, then you call it rapid. If it's below 60, you call it slow. And then in between, it's moderate. Some people call it a controlled ventricular response. You could use either. Well, then the question is, what's making the QRS complex wide? Because when you measure the QRS duration in any of these leads, it's at least 140, maybe even 160 milliseconds in some leads. Well, that's where you have to start to look at the pattern of the QRS complex. The wide QRS tells you that an intraventricular conduction disturbance is present. And the next question is, is it a left bundle or a right bundle or a non? specific IVCD because those are the three categories. So look for V1 and you should know by now that a left bundle branch block will be characterized by a very deep negative deflection with no septal R wave in V1. You may have a little bit of an R wave that grows but it remains deeply inverted until a transition point and then in V6 often you'll see notching. The lateral leads including V6 as well as 1 and AVL, a notch QRS complex is characteristic of a left bundle branch block but you have have to make sure that you don't see those septal R waves in V1 or septal Q waves in 1 and AVL. That really tells you that you have a true left bundle branch block and not just sort of an atypical left bundle or a left type IVCD or one of the other less classic varieties. Well, I do have an extended discussion on bundle branch blocks in my intermediate level course, which should be available by the end of April 2012. Well, anyway, once you've diagnosed the left bundle branch block, 
and you see the axis is leftward. It's um, isoelectric in lead two, so that means it's minus 30 degrees. It's probably more leftward than minus 30 because it's a little bit negative in lead two, probably minus 40 degrees. And this is pretty much a classic left bundle branch block, and there's not a lot else you can diagnose here. The voltage is very generous and sort of meets the minimal criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy, but otherwise, pretty much you're done. So I hope that was helpful to you guys out there. And please check out the ECG Academy, since there are over nine hours of video content to make you an ECG expert. Even the basic level is pretty complex. And if you try taking my pretest, you'll get a sense of what level I'm trying to get you to, even in just the basic course. Intermediate does go into more detail in 12 leads, and there will be an advanced level that will cover some more esoteric stuff. Meanwhile, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.